Hi, this is Dave Gallagher with 3D Appeal Blog, and today we're going to look at the character Izzy from Michael. And uh, first we're going to look a little bit at the rig, just a tiny bit, and then um, at the overall model. And then I've done some uh, makeover uh, work on the face, so we're going to look at that. All right, first let's look at the, the rig itself. So there, um, yeah, there isn't too much here to um, complain about. The, the only thing is the... Um, couple of things that the, the head normally if you want to create a, an IK solution you would want that IK uh, position to lock to it to, to that position that you're creating by the rig so this is sliding through so it's not as effective as a uh, as an IK solution also when you rotate it you get quite a bit of kickback and so it'd be difficult to pose something where you wanted the head to um, you wanted the head to to make a tighter curve so it's just not a great control for um, um, for IK. With the shoulders, you'd probably want something that um, creates just a, a, a tighter lift around here, and then um, probably closer to the neck. It feels like it's basically it feels like it's breaking the higher you lift it. With the fingers, you probably want to set the. Um, let me turn this. Uh, wireframe on. You probably want to set this uh, joint, first joint in the finger, way back here. because This is uh, too far forward. That joint actually exists in your hand. If you look at your structure of your hand, it exists way back here. And the, uh, the webbing of the fingers is actually quite a bit further forward than um, the structure, the bone, the bone of the uh, first knuckle. Alright, we're going to look at the uh, model overall just for a minute. When I look at this, the feeling I get is like sort of like a too too solid on the bottom. I think that you've gotten the um, the legs too big and um, the belly just a little bit too big. I, I when I look at the uh, the art, he feels kind of svelte. You know, he feels kind of like light and lithe. And there's certainly you know there's some thicker bits, but uh, overall you've got sort of a a tubular action going on in the neck and it just flows through and the belly's a little bit bigger the uh, forearms are bigger bigger Popeye style but not enormously um, where you've got uh, on the legs just like they're, they're sort of massively uh, weighted and so I, I would keep keep them just sort of thinner overall and then like you're doing you go thinner on the on the on the uh, upper arm and then the forearm go thicker but uh, keeping him a little bit more, a um, li little bit lighter. You, you want the, the thumb to be oriented so that it's not um, in line or aligned with the fingers. It's actually cocked um, quite a few degrees from, from the fingers so that the, just that default action is going to take that thumb uh, this direction here in through there. Okay, so that would mean that that thumb is oriented. It's basically instead of there, it's, it's sort of like positioned there, coming down like this. Okay, and that's going to give you a much better. Whoops, going to give you a much better um, result on the on the rig and the operation. All right now we're going to look at the head. This is um, this is the original, and um, here I've got the drawing in to look at. So let's zoom in on the head a little bit. So just consider this um, design for a minute. I'm seeing the eyes being very prominent and the snout being like a contained unit that you can then shape. Um, the snout is sort of shapeable <clears throat> so that uh, when you have a, a pose like this, that, um, that edge of the snout or the border can change shapes and that color change and that shape change give you keys as to the um, the emotion. So that that border is really important. And so what you want to do is sort of describe that in the shaping and the and the geometry. All right. So this is a nice appealing uh, design, and you you see those eyes being very prominent. And the first thing I when I look at this model is that the eyes when you open those lids they're not going to be um, big like this and no matter what you do because because the um, two things that they're not wide enough and also the the lid space 
sort of tops out like the, that lid can't go any higher than this point right here and it can't really go much lower than this because you've got this big uh, border and here are the um, here are the edges of the lids that way so this eye when you open it its biggest is going to be like this and that's not really going to be the same visually as, as what you're seeing over here and so you know of course you can do a little scaling and such but um, it, it won't be very easy to get that big so when I look at this I want the eyes bigger and I want the mouth to be part of that um, that snout shape and be be closer so those are the things I'm thinking about um, as I look at this and the other thing is um, it was really important to get the uh, the three-quarter silhouette of the backside to be uh, appealing and I keep seeing this huge uh, massive shape coming off of the brows and connecting completely connecting with the um, with the cheeks and so the cheeks feed into the um, the brows just too completely that creates a look like, a, like an orangutan because it's just too um, brow centered. All right, so what we want to do is cut back on those. So those are the main things. And, and um, so this is a, a reworking of the model. So the eyes, see how the eyes are bigger. Now they're not, they're still not stretched like that. And I've got them into a pose a little bit um, just, to, just to show a little bit of that shaping, what would happen. But you would want to take that even further in, in the posing. You'd probably want to apply a lattice to it and get it a little bit further, but it's sort of native construction is going to it's going to give you something closer to that by default. So that eye is very prominent. It's about the same size as what it is uh, on the design here. And then the, the relationship between the, um, the eye and the snout is different, where this is sort of like a big expanse, and there's no sort of border or... Um, crease to, to reshape and so there's two things is one is get, getting them closer so see that border starts to get created and the uh, the proximity to the eye from the from the mouth and the snout area so it's really important to get those closer together and, and that relationship will um, express a lot of the emotion um, and then the snout is actually angled down whereas in the original model the snout is, is up and I felt like it was too long and too far up. The brows were uh, too um, large as well, so they were too large out here and too large in the in the middle there. And going back to that idea of the um, the border, that border has to be described in the geometry. So rather than this with the the coloration cutting across the geometry, and then when you try to emote that, when you try to move this mouth around and move those cheeks around in the snout it's going to sort of cut across all that geometry and not sort of create that border by default. So instead we want to, we want to cut that border into the geometry and have that layout um, help us as we try to, uh, as we shape that in, in, uh, in making expressions. So you see how that's going to, going to be easier for us. So um, I didn't put quite enough um, lid geometry. You'd want to include more rows for the lids, but uh, for, for when it closed. But I think it's really important to go instead of from the closed and to the open, to start with the open because getting the closed is a little bit easier than getting a really appealing open. You're going to be, like I said, bound by uh, the sort of geometry zones that are created by this. Whereas here, I, I feel, like, feel like you're setting yourself up for success when you uh, try to define the open, uh, the shape of the open, um, the lids. And you can do things like, um, let's see, I, I set the, um, the corners to be lower, so they weren't right in the middle. They're actually lower um, than the, the midway point. All right, and then the, um, the head gets to be very wide at the top. And I think in keeping with this design that there's a, you'd want it to be a little bit more peaky. So this sort of comes to a little bit of a ridge, and there's, a, there's a, just a smaller top. So the eyes are, are more prom visually prominent, but the uh, cranium itself uh, doesn't feel as huge and the brows don't feel as huge, and they're coming to a nice peak. Um, and then from the side, I think you want to describe the back of the skull there and keep it high. In fact, I might even take it a little bit higher so that the back of the skull feels like it's not um, lower than the mouth. So I would say this is actually wrong. I would cut it a little bit higher. But um, I think it's important to kind of create a landmark for that. And um, 
from the side, you're getting that, you're feeling that eye. You, you're going to be locked off from seeing the eye even here because that brow is, is occluding it as soon as we roll around. But here we want to open up, we want to open up that eye just a little bit so that it's, it's angled outward just a hair. Um, so it's right now, now that the plane of the eyes, it exists on a, on a completely um, flat plane toward the front. So instead we want to angle that this way, get those eyes um, forward a little bit that way. From the front, we can look at the overall lines. And so what I'm seeing here when I look at this is sort of wide going to thin. So there's this triangle um, shape happening. And instead, I just think that it would be better to um, minimize that and just have it come into a little bit of a nub instead and not emphasize that, that uh, triangle shape uh, overly. So the ears, um, I think their connection point was too large. And it's kind of difficult when you're doing this kind of thing because you don't know if you're describing the fur or the um, or the skin. But um, uh, I think either way, the connection is kind of big and kind of set outward a bit. And so I, I try to get it closer to the uh, the inner part of the head, and then the actual bending point to be um, not as protruded. So it's it's cropped closer to the head. And then with the uh, the ear shape, I feel like it's hanging from here. Like this would be the this would be the area that that it would bend from, right right here, right. And this is sort of all hanging down more or less from from this point. And so trying to get it so that um, there wasn't so much ear um, real estate down that way. I tried to get the um, just the idea of this. Um, this, this two shapes in the snout, there's the uh, really nice, hard, uh, straight shape here, and then the two on the side that puff out and create the, the, the muzzle, the, the main part of the muzzle. And so rather than on the original having it be sort of formless, instead going where it actually has that muzzle shape, has that demarcation of the, the, the top part here, and then a, a break, and then the bottom part here. So it's, so it's sort of de, um, distinguished from the top. And then that's continued in this um, from this angle so that it's wider and more connected to the nose. All right, so hopefully these are some ideas uh, you can use, Michael, in your um, further exploration with this uh, cool character design, Izzy.